Hi everyone, it's Stephanie here and welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be creating with the Spotlight Poppies card kit. This is a gorgeous new card kit that features a large cling mount stamp. So this is the background stamp and this is called Poppies Background. And then there's a really unique element to this set because what it has is it has three individual stamps that coordinate perfectly with the background stamp. So there's three separate blooms that match perfectly with three of the blooms that are featured in the background stamp. And then there's also dies that can die cut those individual flower images. And what this does is it allows you to create some really cool spotlight stamping effects on your card designs. So that's what we're gonna do today. I'm going to be using the background stamp first and I'm going to be stamping it onto a piece of black cardstock. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna emboss the background onto this panel of black cardstock. So I'm using my magic powder bag to completely cover that cardstock piece so that I can prevent any of that embossing powder sticking where I don't want it. And then I'm going to add some Versamark ink to the background stamp. I'm going to fully cover that and get it nice and inky. And then I'm going to take that cardstock panel and lay it directly onto the background stamp. I find this is the easiest way to transfer a larger image to a panel rather than flipping the stamp over and putting it directly onto the cardstock. So I'm gonna lay this piece onto my background stamp, making sure that I have the main focal images on this cardstock panel. Since the background stamp measures a larger area than the panel that we're using, you just wanna strategically place that where you want the stamped images to appear on your panel. So once I've given that some good pressure and I've made sure I've really transferred all of that ink to the cardstock panel, I'll go ahead and very carefully lift that off of the stamp. Now Versamark ink is a clear sticky ink, so the cardstock panel will stick a little bit, so you just wanna carefully lift that off, and then you can kind of see what we've stamped on there. It's not super obvious, but that doesn't matter because we're going to put embossing powder directly over top of this, and then you're really gonna see it pop. So you can see as I'm adding that white embossing powder, we're getting that really bright, bold image onto the background. Now this is stunning just on its own. Once I had this fully embossed, I loved the look of just the white and the black together. It's just a really cool effect and it makes a really pretty background. Now I did have a few stray pieces of embossing powder, so I'm taking a paintbrush and I'm just very carefully removing any of those extra pieces before I start to heat set it. And then once I have that done, I can go ahead and start to heat emboss it. So I let my heat gun get really nice and hot before I brought it to my paper. And now I'm going around and I'm fully heat setting all of that stamped area. And you can see as I do that, that the white gets really vibrant and really stands out on that black background. Now this is all we need to do with this for right now, so I'm gonna set it aside, and I'm gonna get the smaller stamps here that coordinate with the background. Now what's great about these is that if you stamp them separately and you want to use the coordinating dies, you can go ahead and die cut them and you're not gonna get any imagery on the edges of them, you're just gonna get a nice clean white border. So that's what's really cool about having the background stamp and then the separate blooms to stamp on their own. Now for the purposes of my card today, I decided that I'm not gonna use the dies and I'm just gonna cut the blooms out with my scissors. And the reason for that is, is I want to have them completely colored in with red and to really stand out against the background. And I don't wanna have that border on this specific design. So I'm just stamping them out one at a time on a panel of white cardstock and I'm using extreme black ink to do the stamping since I am going to be coloring these with Copic markers. Once I have them stamped, I can go ahead and start my coloring. I am gonna only color one of the flowers on camera since I did color them all exactly the same way. And when I first started coloring it, I was being very careful to stay in the lines. And then I realized that I'm gonna cut this out anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So you're gonna see here in a minute, I start to go a little crazy and just color all over the place. And if you are using the dyes, you're not gonna to wanna to do this. You're, wanna, you're gonna to wanna to stay inside those lines. But since I know I'm gonna cut it out, I'm not gonna to worry too much and save a little bit of time by doing a little bit of quicker coloring. Once I laid down that first initial color, which is the R35, I'm gonna go in with the R39, which is the second to last darkest color there. And I'm going to go along and start to add some shading in all of the areas on the stamp. This stamp set is really great for someone who is new with Copic markers or colored pencils or anything that they wanna color, but they're not really sure on lighting or shading. They have all of the markings on them already, kind of showing you where you want the darker areas. So all you really need to do is just follow the markings on the stamps with your markers and you're going to beautifully shade these without any effort at all. So I just did that exact thing. I just took my darkest colors and I went along in the darker area of the stamps. And then I went in with my medium color to kind of blend that out a bit. Now I feel like the star of the show is when you come in with that really dark color, which is the R89. And I'm adding a really nice amount of contrast with that dark color. 
Now I'm not using a ton of it because I don't want to overshadow everything I've already done. I'm just kind of going along the edges of the lines, but you can see as I'm adding this color how much contrast that adds to the flower. It's just gorgeous when you finish with the coloring. Okay, so I jumped ahead here and you can see I have them all colored. I colored them the exact same way. And now like I mentioned, I'm going to use my scissors and I'm going to cut these out. They have a really nice bold outline, so they're pretty easy to cut out. I didn't have any issues at all. And I just went one by one and used my smaller scissors here to cut along the edges of these flowers. Anytime that you hand cut an image, you'll get a little bit of a white core around the edge where you've done all of your cutting. So I like to take a black marker and just kind of carefully go around the edges of the cutout images. And I like to just color along that. And what it does is it covers up that white and it gives you a really nice finished look on the edge because it completely covers it with that black marker. So I did go around and do that to all three of these flowers. And now we have these ready to go and we can start to work on the assembly of our card. We have the main components completed, which is the embossed background, and then the colored flowers here that we have colored in with our Copics and then hand cut with our scissors. So my plan for this card is to have a little bit of layering with cardstock and to have this panel that I've heat embossed cut smaller than it actually is already. So I have a rectangle die here and I'm just gonna run this through my die cutting machine and just cut out a section of this piece. And I made sure to keep the three flowers in that area and I wanted to make it so that I could overlap the flowers so they kind of hung outside of that black embossed panel. So you can see that my two main flowers kind of go over the edge. I also cut out a piece of white cardstock and a piece of red cardstock, and I'm gonna use these to mat that main panel. Having the white and the red panels here is just gonna really tie all of the colors together and help the panel stand out against the black card base. So my normal size when creating cards is an A2 size card, which is four and a quarter by five and a half. But when I layered this panel onto that size and layered the flowers on top, they actually hung over both sides of the card. So I decided to kind of get creative with my card base and make it kind of an odd size for me. So this card base actually measures four and three quarters by six inches. And that just allowed me to be able to overlap my flowers, as you can see here, and go over the edge of that panel, but not go over the edge of the card base. So I will just use a larger envelope if I send it through the mail or I would just hand deliver it and just kind of hand it as is. So you don't be afraid to kind of change up the card design or the card size to work together. So now I'm just layering my poppies over top of the background stamp. So as you can see, they fit perfectly over top since they are sized exactly the same. And I am using foam adhesive under each of those flowers to give them some dimension. So you can see here I'm starting to deconstruct my card and that's just because the flower bloom on the right hand side overhangs a lot more than the one on the left. So I realized that having the panel in the center of the card really wouldn't work. So I'm just offsetting it over to the left side a little bit. I'm just going to adhere it back into place and now I can layer that second bloom and it's going to have a nice even space on the right side of the card like the one does on the left. Okay, so the last thing we need to do is just add our last flower here. So I'm using foam adhesive once again and covering the back of it. And then I'm just going to adhere it directly over top of that embossed outline. I love this flower because it fits perfectly inside of the panel. And this one's gonna give me a little spot where I can add our little sentiment strip. You can definitely leave this card without a sentiment. It's gorgeous on its own and you could just write a message on the inside. But I did wanna add a little bit of something to that bottom right corner. So I am going to add a stamp sentiment. I die cut a little banner from the Skinny Strips Dynamics and I stamped it with the word hello. This hello stamp is from the Greetings and Salutations stamp set and I just stamped it on there with black ink. I didn't want to introduce any new colors so I just stayed with a white banner and black ink for the sentiment. And then I just added a bit of foam adhesive on the back of this and I'm going to just tuck it under that single flower there that's not hanging off of the panel. I love the spacing that I had there and I love how that sentiment looks kind of tucked under the flower. The last thing I wanna do is I wanna add a lot of sparkle to my blooms. I feel like these are big and beautiful and they will look even better if they have a bit of sparkle to them. And if you use a clear sparkle pen, it's not super obvious. You can see here as I'm tilting it, you barely even notice it. But when I shine some light on here and then I tilt it, you can see that subtle sparkle that we get. It's absolutely gorgeous in person and I just think it really adds to the overall look of the card. And then that is going to complete our card. So I hope you got some ideas on ways that you can use the new Spotlight Poppies card kit. It's a gorgeous background stamp on its own. It's really fun to combine the smaller stamps and do some layering. There are so many great ways you can use this and I can't wait to see what you guys create. As always, I appreciate you being here and I hope to see you in another video soon. Thanks so much for watching.